Mr Haslam, was it a sunny day in Derbyshire? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, I think we've been quite fortunate with the weather. You know, with the lockdown, we've uh, lucky enough to live on the farm. So we've been outside most of the time and uh, my dad band in my JCB and my little mini digger doing jobs. But uh, yeah, it's been really nice. What, doing jobs like making motocross tracks and things or actual jobs? No, actual jobs. We've uh, been rerouting sewages and manholes and, uh, yeah, you know, just uh, jobs that you probably nev never do in a million years. We've, uh, you know, me and my dad's been pretty busy with that. So, yeah, it's kept me busy at least. Or, or jobs that most people would never do in a million years, full stop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's always something to do. So, you, have you, you must have had plenty of time for training and homeschooling and other, other delightful things. Yeah, um, you know, for me... You know, I can't remember the last time one I was injury free and every winter you get like maybe a month of, you know, an operation, a recovery and try and get fit for the following year. And this winter was the first winter ever that I've not had an operation. Um, and I went into this winter, probably the fittest I was. Um, and then since Australia, I've had pretty much eight weeks of nothing but cycling and proper rehab and recovery. So, you know, honestly, I feel the best I've ever felt. Um, obviously missing the bikes, but... Uh, Lucky we've managed to get out a few times on the trials bike and we got out on the pit bikes last week, which, uh, you know, was definitely uh, welcomed. Um, but, yeah, physically, it's um, definitely the best I've ever felt. This will be your, well, when it, when it gets going again, it'll be your first year on the actual proper factory Honda. How has it been um, being in that kind of, that rarefied environment? Ah, you know, I have no words really, you know, going from BSB to, you know, what was the factory Kawasaki team, you know, was like a dream come true. But, you know, I, I knew that it was going to be tough, you know, getting back into electronics, world championship, going into the team with Jonathan, you know, it was always going to be a tough year. Um, yeah. But this opportunity, HRC, you know, the very first meeting we had was in HRC headquarters. They, they flew me directly there for wind tunnel testing. Um, you know, pre-season testing was all private, just us on track with, you know, numerous Japanese, the vice president of HRC on every test. It, you know, it, you cannot ask for any more. You know, I've, I've grown up with a background with Honda, with my dad, uh, and obviously myself in racing. And I've rode for, I would say, Honda, HRC, but never directly for HRC. And this definitely is a big difference. Um, you know, I have massive faith in the project. And I have massive faith in Honda. And to be a part of that is, yeah, a massive dream come true. Was it, was it a big difference between this and KRT or not so much? Yeah, I think the biggest difference is, is you know, the Kawasaki dominantly hasn't really changed since, you know, since Tom won on it in that first year. Um, and then obviously since Jonathan turned up to that team, it was kind of changed with the rules because it had to and, you know, and changed around to winning five world championships with Johnny. Um, so coming into that, it was, it wasn't, I would say an open arms, let's change the bike to make it work for you. It was, this is wins world championships and, you know, kind of crack on. And, you know, I had a really good relationship with the guys. We didn't have that much preseason testing and, we actually took it to Johnny at the very first race in Australia. But, you know, what a lot of people missed out that year is that I went into the year injured. I had three operations on my ankle and an operation on my back in, in season. And uh, I'm not going to lie, it was tough. It was a really tough year. Um, I spent the whole year trying to adapt my natural style to the bike and how he was riding it, which was obviously working because he was winning. Um, and, you know, halfway through the year, I kind of, realized I was never going to adapt my natural style to his and to beat him. I needed to adapt the bike to my natural style if I was ever going to, you know, win races and, and, win, and, and go from there. And, and for me, that was the, the stumbling block of, of what last year was. Um, but from the very first lap on this Honda, um, you know, where we took the bike in a matter of days on track, you know, that how they listen, you know, completely transformed the whole concept of the bike from head angles to swing arm lengths to, you know, linkages, whatever it may be, and, and how fast Honda's reacted. Um, you know, it, we knew it was going to be a tall order, you know, starting in November to produce a bike to compete at that level in a matter of months was always going to be tough. But I 
can honestly say that, that, that up to this day, I cannot ask for no more. And, um, you know, time will tell, but I'm pretty confident that it will be a winning package. Were, were KIT just unwilling to change their motorbike for you? Or, or was, there, was it just a difficult thing to do? No, it's always a compromise. And there was no doubt in the fact that the bike that I had under me could win races uh, if it was ridden a certain way. And, and, you know, if you maximised that, I would say, package. But, you know, I always found it quite easy doing a three-day test with the bike because you had three days, 100 laps per day to, one, adapt my style, but two, adapt the bike a little bit to me. Um, but going to circuits and having two 45-minute sessions and then a one-lap super pole and a race, one, I was not getting up to speed fast enough and adapting my style. And two, to try and reinvent a setup that would work for me in those two 45 minutes was near enough an impossible job. So yeah. you know, a one-year stab at it, I, you know, I, I would say it was near enough an impossible target. And and me trying, I would say, probably too hard, as I tendently do in, mm -hmm. in my career, um, you know, bit me in the arse. You know, I, I've not ever been a crasher. Um, in 2018, I did a whole year without crashing one time. and soon as we started to struggle um you know i had crashes race after race and um again just probably trying too hard um you know not accepting as i was told several times that you know a top five would be okay and knowing that I, if i had time or had the right a different approach i could challenge for a win was sometimes hard to take and uh, you know that there, there was the, the troubles that I, I came across in in, in that year but races won't settle for a top five, will they? Because if, if, you, if, you're, if you're willing to settle for a top five, then you need to stop, don't you? Yeah, you know, that's been my mentality. and It has been a little bit of my downfall as well. You know, some weekends, the top five is the result that you need to kind of accept and understand that we didn't have the package or I didn't quite have it down how to adapt myself to a circumstance. But, yeah, I overrode it quite a lot. Um, there was a certain area of the bike that I really struggled with, which, um, you know, took Top Rack a, a couple of years to adapt his natural style to, you know, and dominantly it was how the bike stopped and how you could use that as an advantage. And it was the strength of the Kawasaki, but coming from BSB with, without all the electronics, it was one of my biggest hindrances. Um, so the, the one point of the bike that was quite a positive um, was a massive hindrance for me. And, uh, you know, trying to adapt my style to that was obviously was one of my biggest issues. But do, do you think with another year you could have got you you could have got the engine braking things nailed and sorted out and made it into something you could win on, or was it was it just going to be a difficult thing to do, no matter how no matter how many years you had that sort? Of no, honestly, if I had another year on it, I'd have, I, I would have quit racing if I wasn't in the top three. Um, <laughs> you know, every single track that I tested at before I raced, I got on the podium. Um, so, yeah, it, it was difficult going to circuits that I've not been to. And it was a little bit difficult because we started off purely just concentrating on adapting my style. And then it worked at some tracks, not at others. My natural style worked at some places and not others. And yeah. it was a little bit of an roller coaster. Um, so I believe we learned a lot, but we never really got to put it down into hard results. And, you know, on the odd race, I managed to challenge and, and battle with Johnny in race two to Aragon for, for a podium. And same with Philip Island and a few other rounds with in Mazzano battling for podiums and stuff. But it was a bit of a roller coaster year. And when I struggled, I struggled a lot and overrode and that made more mistakes. So, you know, I'm not blaming anyone. It was all my doing, but probably hoping for more than what was possible in year one was, was kind of difficult. Did, did you kind of go looking for another job before Kawasaki told you that you hadn't got a job? Or did Honda come to you? Or how, how did the whole, how did the swap? Well, yeah, it was, a, it was a little bit difficult because, you know, I got told that I was staying put and I was going to be there and that was going to be a continuation of that. And it went very, um, it changed, I would say, probably after Suzuka, which was strange because we won Suzuka, um, and, and the announcement of Top Rack leaving, um, things changed very quickly. And the idea was for me to go to Pachetti to help that team continue getting good results like Top Rack was getting. And it was looking for a more younger rider, I would say, to, I'd say, groom to take over from Jonathan. And that, for me, was the 
the outside perception of what it was, but the communication of that wasn't very clear. Um, as well as that, the support for Manuel wasn't very clear. Um, so, yeah, it dragged on and on. And in that time, I got to pursue other avenues. And, you know, I pursued BSB again. I pursued several rides in World Championship. But by that stage, you know, I'd already accepted I was staying with Kawasaki because that's what I was told. And then, you know, all the other rides like the BMW and, and various other rides that I would say that I would have considered had all gone because it was too late. So the fact that Honda, you know, I had not spoke to Honda and I approached them saying that I might be available. And it was only because they was in quite late in, in the season to make decisions that it actually probably played in my favor. Um, you know, <laughs> It was a, a dream ride that I never really expected. It was an unknown ride because they'd not been in a championship. A lot of rumours was going around of, you know, if it was going to be factory, if it wasn't, you know, a lot of years, Hondas were supposed to come back to the world championship and, and never have. So, you know, I always said if, you know, if HR, all the contracts on the table and there's a HRC one sitting there run by Honda, then there's no question that's the one that you want to take, regardless of what the bike is or, or whatever it may be. And, and, and actually, when it come true, and 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 that was an option for me, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was like a massive lifeline. But at the same time, you know, I felt like um, a kid at Christmas. I felt like, oh, oh, I got all the presents in one day. Do you have you got have you got a team that's completely new to you, or did you know it? Are there any guys that you knew from previous years racing in it? No, com completely new. All the guys. Um, you know, I asked that question early on in our negotiations and the, the reply was basically, um, trust us, we'll, we'll give you a good team. And, you know, um, all the guys actually on my side of the garage, every single one of them, have never been in World Superbike. Um, so, you know, again, going in, new bike, completely new team, um, no mechanics from my side have, have been in World Championship. It was, you know... I would say a lot of hurdles that I would normally question quite heavily, but the fact that it was HRC putting it together, yeah. it was, again, you know, let's roll with this. Um, I knew that, obviously, my experience of setting up bikes, to create our, there was a lot, I had a lot of things, obviously, going for me for the ride, but obviously, in my mind, this is probably the best opportunity I've got, not necessarily in year one, but to be world champion, and I don't think I would have achieved that you know, where I was and opportun other opportunities I had. I don't think I would have achieved being world champion, but with this one, I 100% think I can be. So, uh, yeah, for me, um, it was put the trust in them and, and let's go test them. I mean, I, where, did your, where did your crew chief come from? Because I have to profess I'd never heard of him. When I, I went, Ollie said who he was. I went, oh, really? Who's that? <laughs> Yeah, Gorka, his, um, his background is actually from Moto2. He worked for the right. HRC team. Um, yeah, and um, is, is mainly with the Moto2 side. And the strange enough, the last two years, I've uh, based myself in Barcelona doing flat tracking and, yeah. and a, little, a little bit of training in the winter as such. And uh, on two occasions, he's actually changed the rear tyre for me on my flat track bike, uh, helping out at Rocco's Ranch. So uh, I had actually met, met him a couple of times and... Um, yeah, honestly, the, the enthusiasm, there are quite a lot of young guys, a lot of guys from Moto2 who have been with Honda before. Uh, we've got some experienced guys in there as well that have been with Repsol and, and obviously LCR with Cal Crutchlow and stuff. And yeah, obviously all handpicked. Um, I believe the team was handpicked by Alberto Puge, you know, all the mechanics and team manager and coordinators, et cetera. And yeah, the, the enthusiasm for them, I think, is massive and big change moving to the World Superbike Championship. But yeah. Um, yeah, the backing and support that I've had from them from testing is, uh, yeah, instantly clicked, I would say. Um, okay. You know, Australia was a tough weekend, but, you know, we could have easily got on the podium with two laps to go. We was fighting for the podium. Sunday we had some problems, but the potential was there. The atmosphere was great. Um, yeah, I'm just a little bit gutted that we've had to now sit out for eight weeks uh, thinking about what can be. And what, what, ha what happens going forward now? Because, I mean, are you on a, were you on a year and an option? Yeah, obviously it's there, Rob. So, so yeah, basically it's a one-year deal. But um, yeah, obviously I'd like, I'd love to continue um, the project. We've got to wait and see what happens this year. Um, from from my point of view, you know, it was always going to be a two-year option for the bike and the team anyway. Um, so yeah, well, we, I think obviously they're waiting and seeing. I'm waiting and seeing. Um, so far, every test that we've been to, we've been the fastest and felt that 
as a whole, me and Alvaro's had this very same idea of what the bikes needed. So, you know, I've not actually done any testing out in Japan yet for Suzuka, and, which obviously I know is very important. So I'm looking forward to all those things. You know, I'm looking forward to getting out to Suzuka, do some more development riding, uh, do the race itself. I'm looking forward to more rounds on this bike because, you know, I know that the potential is there. Um, it's just the teething problems that we need to overcome. And I don't think this break has been a bad thing because, you know, we've got to analyze all the issues that we did have and teething problems that we did have for the last eight weeks. <laughs> what, um, speaking of Suzuka, do you know who you're riding with? Sorry, mate, I'm, I lost you then. Um, at Suzuka, do you know who, who, your, who your teammates are yet? Or? No, nothing yet. Um, no. Obviously, the official team in the Japanese Championship are, are pulled out. Obviously, Takahashi, is, um, I've won Suzuka with him twice. He's one of the fastest Japanese riders. So I'm assuming he'd be there. Um, I know that obviously in my contract, I'm, I'm down to do it. But for who and who will be my teammate? Who knows? I know Dominic Agat is one of the test riders for us. And he's done Suzuka for the last few years. Um, there's been mention of, you know, your crutch lows and even Alvaro to go and test for it. And I think, uh, you know, as Honda as a whole, they've, they've got a good pick of good riders. So, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what team they do put together. And, you know, it'd be nice to win back to back with two different manufacturers for myself. And it'll be my third win with Honda as well, which, uh, you know, obviously would be fantastic. Uh, would, would you like to be riding this bike at Donington in July? I'd love to be at Donington in July. Um, you know, I'm a little bit, um, I would say, anxious of when we do get to go out again because, you know, to go straight into a racing situation is is always going to be tough. You know, testing is kind of key for us right now. And um, to go to Donington as a race, at least I know the circuit. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, it'd be lovely to start the season off in Donington. Um, I'm hoping that we get to test um, as early as late June. That I think that's the provisional date in there at the minute but obviously it changes on a daily basis so um yeah want to just get on the bike you know uh, i've been facetiming and zooming and cycling with all the boys on swift the, the last few weeks so uh, it'd be nice just to get everyone together again